So how do we deal with arrays when we're tracing through code by hand? I, I've drawn out uh, on this example a um, uh, partial diagram. Here's my array, my bombastically large array A1 in main. We're going to print A1, we're going to call this function f, and then we're going to print A1 again. Now I'm not going to bother drawing the print array function on my diagram, and often on exam questions there are these print functions, and there's usually an assurance, don't worry, the print function does what you think it does. There's no need to trace it directly. What I want to do is see what happens if we trace the function f. So f takes four arguments. So let's queue ourselves up to line number 44. We've set the elements of my input array A1, and I want to pass it into f. So there's f. And basically the question is, what exactly is it that I'm passing into f? So f takes four arguments. Let's draw them on our diagram here. The first argument is called size, and the, the size that I pass in is 5. The second argument is my array, so a. And maybe you can see I'm drawing it on my diagram like it's a pointer, and in fact it is. I don't use the square brackets here because the compiler is actually taking a pointer. It interprets this to mean int star, and we should see through that. It's good to write it like this because it makes the code more readable. But when you pass an array into a function, you are just passing a pointer. And the pointer you're passing, well, let's see. The value of a1 is this arrow. So the value that gets passed in is that arrow. And because we know by now that pointers and arrays are very similar, it shouldn't surprise us that all this time we've been passing arrays into functions, and it actually has been a pointer all along. Okay, so there we've got our integer x, and that's the third parameter, and it is 4. We've got an int y, which is set to 3, and that's our fourth parameter. And then I'll leave this area blank for my variable uh, when I run these for loops. Okay, so we start our code for f, and it says for int i equals 0. And uh, maybe I should have uh, made my function a little bit larger here, my scoping box. All right, that's a pretty badly built extension, probably not up to code. Um, so I'll make a scope for my for loop. And fortunately, ugh, fortunately, my for loop only has one variable inside of it that I have to declare. So there we go, int i. i is set to 0. i is, uh, I asked the question, is i less than x? The answer is yes, x is 4. And then at each step, what do I do? a sub i equals i. Okay, so at this point, the, uh, the actual value of i is 0, so a sub 0 equals 0. So I follow the arrow from a, I walk 0 steps in ahead, and then I set that value to 0. Okay, next iteration. i is now equal to 1. 1 is still less than 4, so I keep going. a sub 1 equals 1. All right, uh, next iteration, i is equal to 2. Okay, so I think we're getting the idea. a sub 2 equals 2. All right, next iteration, i is equal to 3. Okay, a sub 3 equals 3. All right, and then the loop ends. So when i is, well, i gets set to 4, but then the loop ends. Um, so we destroy the scope. We dutifully destroy it, even though we know we're about to hit a new for loop. And I will cheat just a little bit, and I will leave this scoping box completely blank because I know I'll be filling it in again in a minute. Here we go. Um, let's take a look. So line 30. For int i equals 1, okay, so it's a for loop again, so there's the 4, and then I say, okay, let's start i int, and we set it to 1. i less than or equal to y, okay, so 1 is less than or equal to 3, so we go ahead. a of size minus i, well, let's map that out, so i is equal to 1, so size minus i would be equal to 4. a of 4 equals, okay, this would be 1, okay, so there's follow a, 1, 2, 3, 4, that gets set to 1. All right, next iteration, i equals i plus 1, so we set i to be 2. Uh, okay, so size minus i would be 5 minus i, which is 3, uh, and then i is 2. So a sub 3 equals 2, so a and then 1, 2, 3, that gets set to be 2. And maybe you can see a pattern forming here, but in any case, we should continue. To, we, we may take more steps to pick up on the pattern, so we'll continue with the full trace. Uh, I go to my next iteration. i is now set to be 3. 3 is still less than or equal to y, so we're still good there. And then size uh, 5 minus 3 would be 2, and i is 3. So a sub 2 equals 3, so I follow a. I walk two steps, 1, 2, and I set that to 3. All right. And then the iteration concludes, i gets set to 4, 
and then obviously four is not less than or equal to three, so the loop ends. And so I'll just cross it out this time because I'm not gonna need it in a minute anyway. And then the function ends. It's a function of return type void, so I don't need to return anything. And that means that the scope for the function, of course, gets destroyed. There it goes. And uh, we'll just clean that up a little bit. And then I head back to main. And here I print the array again. And as I said, on tracing questions involving arrays, if you're provided functions like print array, they will do what you expect them to. There is no need to, to actually trace those through by hand. You can if you want to, but we realize that's not a very good use of time on an exam. So when we print out the array, we should expect to see 0, 1, 3, 2, 1. So let's try running it. Uh, oh, did I do it? Yeah. So I pasted some garbage in, make sure we don't paste any garbage in. I don't think that's going to be as big of a problem on the exam, I hope. Uh, so we'll try running it properly. And there it is, 0, 1, 3, 2, 1.